Awesome, so it seems like we are live now. I'm gonna make you host and then you will have to make me co host back again. Hi, Greg. Nice to see you again. Back again. You are back again. That's great. I had a little bit of breakfast between classes. So here I am again. <laughs> Good I don't start like to eating. your day. Yeah, I don't like to eat too early. Um, so when I started that class at eight in the morning for me. Hi, Rianne and Cassandra. Good, here. Good afternoon, everybody. Good to see everyone. It's morning for me still, but afternoon for a lot of you. So yeah. that's really, really good. It's good to see some new faces here as well. This is a brand new class, by the way. Um, I have not taught this class yet uh, in this platform. So I just created this course, especially for all of you. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how the timing is if I'm rushing towards the end to get all the slides. But we will see. So um, welcome to everybody. Get yourself comfy and uh, get your water and your snack or you know feel free to eat your your lunch while you're watching or maybe you're at work and you want to you're watching this on your lunch break uh, just great to have some um some new faces here as well if you want to put your camera on i really love it when you put your camera on at least even just for a few minutes just so we can say hello to each other and then you can take you turn your camera off if you're into um you know if you're eating or if you're i don't know you just want to turn your camera off for a bit there's carol hi carol <laughs> and there's Jeannie. <laughs> Uh, so this is awesome. So yes, this is a brand new class for Get Set Up. I just finished creating it just last week. And we'll go through it and see what's kind of missing and maybe, you know, what we would like to include uh, that I might be missing. So we have Michael today from our support team. He will be in the chat. So feel free to ask him any questions to do with uh, technical stuff. He will also alert me if I've missed something in the chat uh, as we go along. I do like to answer the questions or hear the statement at the time uh, within, the, within the webinar, within the, the class, I should say, because it makes more sense if you can make your comment when I'm talking about whatever it is I'm talking about. So if we can do it now, if it gets too busy and it's a pretty big class, if it gets too busy, I might just save uh, questions to, to the end. So um, what I love is the, reactions button down below you can you can give it you know like I have on my screen it'll come up for a couple seconds the thumbs up will show up or you can do a clap if you agree on something um, I mean there's a few things you can do but you can also do the raise hand and there's the raise hand so it will stay up until you actually click the reactions button and lower your hand so that's a great way to get my attention as well all right let me get my share, my screen shade saved or shared, sorry. So you can see my screen. So you are in the right place if you're here to learn about arthritis management and relief. And we are gonna talk about relief because I am a true believer. We may not be able to rid ourselves of certain medical conditions, but we can certainly put them in remission or reverse them even if I can use the word reverse. Di uh, sorry, arthritis is one of those interesting interesting things. There's ways to improve our arthritis. There definitely are ways, even though it's considered a degenerative type of, of medical condition. Degenerative meaning it gets worse over time. So 
<clears throat> we will, we're going to get to some really interesting things. And of course, if you know me and if you've taken my classes, we are going to talk about food. We always talk about food and nutrition because I really believe that's the center of, of, of our health is what we put in our mouth. So if you haven't met me, and there might be a few here that are, are brand new, I don't recognize a few names. My name is Ravina Chandra. I'm one of the guides here at Get Set Up. I've been teaching since beginning of February of this year, and I've been loving it. I, I do a lot of the health and wellness classes, and I do a bit of personal growth class um, class classes like my nine o'clock morning routine. Greg was there at the morning routine, so we, we learned about why that's important to have a morning routine. And I just have been involved with preventative health for, for a long, long time. So that's kind of, that's a little bit about me. Hi, Salwa, nice to see you. So we learn from each other and remember that's so, so important. So if you have a comment or even a statement, something you wanna like reaffirm what I just said, or you wanna disagree with what I said and you and you have some life experience, feel free to put your hand up or you know put, take yourself off of mute because we do learn from each other. I, as a teacher, even learn from all of you. Like we had this kind of an interesting idea in our last class and I thought, wow, I'm gonna share that in my next morning routines class because I really love that idea. So remember that we also record, so you can ask for a recording at the end of the class. And also we do live stream some of our classes. And today, guess what? We are the lucky ones. We are being live streamed so that others can be in this classroom with us. We can't see them. So we'll just say hi to them, but uh, it, it's just to kind of reach more people. We're trying to reach more people. And also just a quick note, we do not get paid or get kickbacks for any services or, 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 or even the products that I might even talk about today. And I sometimes do talk about products, but I will say one thing for all of you that are in the class and register, you will get a little gift for me, which is this cool little arthritis, uh, um, it's like a toolkit, which gives you some ideas on things to um, improve in your kitchen, in your, in your bathroom. I think I go through a few different areas of your life to help you if you do have some sore joints from arthritis. So that's a, a nice little gift you'll get with my email. I call it a gift because it's nice. I put it in a PDF. It's easy to print. It's easy to see it on your screen, on your computer or your phone. So that will be coming to you at the end of the class. So what are we going to learn today? We're going to understand the different types of arthritis and their causes because some of the causes can be different. We're going to learn nine ways to naturally relieve our arthritis pain. Thank goodness there's more than one way to relieve our arthritis pain because I too suffer from a little bit of osteoarthritis. And then we're going to learn five foods that I have researched and researched and, and found that these are the foods to help us with our arthritic symptoms for the most part. Now there are different types of arthritis that might have to be looked at differently, but we'll get into it a little bit in the class. So unless anybody has any questions, let's get ourselves started. How many types of arthritis are there? Does anybody have a guess or, or, or know how many there are? Anybody? I, I had to look it up because I didn't really know. I knew, I knew the top two because we hear about it a lot but I wasn't really thinking about how many there actually are. There are actually around a hundred different kinds of arthritis and related type conditions. That's a lot. Uh, uh, arthritis actually is when we have inflammation in our joints, it can be in our hand, it can be in our knees, it can be anywhere, but we get uh, swelling of our joints, and it can be quite debilitating, especially if it's in our extremities where we need our hands to, you know, pick up objects, for example. We all, if we do suffer from arthritis, might feel it worse in one area than in another area. Depends on what kind of arthritis you have. Now this, I pick this picture because it's my knees. That's my weak point in my body. It's my knees. That's where I would say my arthritis shows up for me and being overweight, that's not helping. So I'll say that to myself. When I gain a few pounds, it makes a huge difference on how my knees feel. So this is kind of a bit of a myth buster in a way, but arthritis affects around 50 million adults and Get, get, get this, 300,000 children in America. This is, this, these are the stats for United States, for America. 
So isn't that interesting? I mean, arthritis is ageless. That's a, a statement they make because we don't think of, I don't think of like my little nephew or niece getting arthritis. I just, I think of it as a older person's uh, disease. Don't have you thought of it that way? I have. The causes and treatment options are different depending on the type, but what I really wanted you to get from this from this slide is that it is ageless. We can see arthritis in younger and younger people. So let's look. I, I didn't ask the question, what's the most common? Because, you know, like I do in my, in my optimal brain health course, I always say, what's the most popular, most common dementia? And, you know, it sort of makes us think. I think for most of us, we've heard of OA, osteoarthritis, a lot. That is the most common type of arthritis. It seems like every second person has osteoarthritis or tends to get it um, um, come out later on in life. It affects around 27 million people, osteoarthritis. And it really is when the cartilage in your joint starts to break down, the cartilage, it starts to wear, wear down. And when the cartilage wears down, you have a, a situation where you might have bone on bone. Have we, has everybody heard that term, bone on bone? Yeah, you don't want your doctor to say that to you when, he, when he's reading your x-rays because you can see it in the x-ray. You can see how the bone is touching the bone. And that rubbing, we all, if you've experienced it, I feel like I've experienced it. It doesn't feel good at all. I mean, it literally is bone hitting the other bone. Now, if you've got very close because your cartilage is so small or worn down, um, what makes that even worse? When we have inflammation, right? Redness, inflammation, swelling, and it can make it even more painful. And then on top of that, we start walking differently. We start moving differently. And we can actually even have bone spur, spur formation where the bone starts to it builds up its own um, um, callus in a sense like if you've fractured anything you know your bone tries to repair it so if you have arthritis and it's like hitting another bone it starts to build up its own um, formation on the bone which we call spurs and that can be painful because it's kind of like should be there now, I'm not going to get graphic, but I am like this class because we're talking about arthritis. I did really want people to have a good understanding of what it is all about. So what are the risk factors for osteoarthritis, which is the most common type of arthritis? Well, age, unfortunately, yes, it, it, you can get it at a younger age, but it does seem to you have a higher risk as you age. I think it's kind of like over in over 45, I, I believe it can get worse. Obesity, so being overweight can, can worsen your arthritis. Injuries, that's kind of how it started for me and my knees is when I got, I got hit in my knee uh, from a power cart from a golf cart that hit, hit me by accident. Family history, uh, it, there is a hereditary kind of uh, um, component to osteoarthritis. So if you've got a parent or a uh, a sibling that has osteoarthritis, there's a chance that that could affect you as well. And then this one's really important, joint overuse. There's some people, maybe they played soccer when they were younger, which was my dad. He played soccer. He was banging, crashing, you know, playing soccer all his life. He's got knee problems now. And a lot of the, ar the arthritis has come from overuse of those joints. So that's not great either. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. I kind of like this picture because it just shows you how how that joint, if it gets inflamed, how much worse it feels just to make just to take a few steps. So what are some common symptoms of arthritis, osteoarthritis? Anybody have that stiffness in the morning? You feel a little bit stiff until you get moving in the morning. That's a common one. Soreness. Mm -hmm. uh, lack of coordination because your your joints aren't moving quite how you would like them to. And that increased feeling of disability, like nobody likes to hear that word, but as we get older, if we are already feeling less uh, able to move, what happens? It's like a vicious cycle, isn't it? Vicious circle, like you can't move very well. So you stop going for that morning walk because it, you're in agony or in pain in the morning. And so we've got to find other ways to keep our bodies moving. So we don't add on the pounds. We don't make our situation worse. So. 
let's just move on to uh, RA because I wanted to get the definitions and this idea of stuff out of the way first before we get into the natural remedies. We're going to get there. So RA is a short version term for rheumatoid arthritis. Now it is different because it's kind of more of an autoimmune disease, which means our body kind of goes against us a little bit. Like it, it feels when an autoimmune response happens in our body is because our body is like, Hey, there's something foreign here. Something's not right. Something's we don't like this. So they attack whatever that is. And it might be attacking our own joints or attacking our own, um, immune system. You know, that's kind of what, when you have an autoimmune disease, it affects around 1.5 million people. So it's a lot less than osteoarthritis. And, and for some reason, reason, now they haven't said why, I don't know, it could be to do with hormones, but three times more women get rheumatoid arthritis than men. It can affect men, but not as many. Now with RA, you definitely have that morning stiffness. And you would typically have it the same on both sides. So if your your left hand is hurting, your right hand is going to hurt around the same. And very, very common with RA is the joint deformities that show up. So you can get a deformity in your in your your knuckles or other parts of your body. Now, just so we're clear, so as we know, there's over 100, we've, we've established that there's about 100 or so art types of arthritis, but here's some other ones that you might have heard of. There's juvenile arthritis. Again, we, we now realize that young people can get arthritis. So juvenile arthritis is actually an umbrella term. So it's that term above, and then there's little term, there's types of conditions underneath it. So it's an umbrella term for things such as juvenile idiopathic arthritis, juvenile dermatomytosis, so, sorry, I can't even say this word, derm, let's see it, this will break it down, dermatomyositis, so infl itis means inflammation, there's juvenile lupus, we've heard of lupus probably, juvenile scleroderma, so there's, that. that's the umbrella term for the ones for when younger people get arthritis, wow, that's a lot, right, then we have things like, um, the ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis. Has anybody heard of psor psoriatic arthritis? If you're a golfer, there's that famous golfer, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, famous golfer that has psoriatic arthritis. And he's he's been doing very well. I don't know if he's retired, but he's been playing golf for a long, long time. With this type of arthritis, wow, he's had to manage it. Lupus. That's the full full name for lupus, but lupus is also one of those, it, it's a considered an arthritis. What about gout? Has anybody here heard of gout? That can run in the family a little bit. Yes, big toe on the foot, like the, when you get that pain in the big toe, it, when you know that, when you get that pain, you know your gout is inflamed. There are two medications for gout now, um, that has been around for a while, preventative, if you're somebody who gets gout a lot, those crystals, it crystallizes and it just is painful in your foot. Oh, it's the pain is just excruciating. Gout can be very excruciating. And then what about fibromyalgia? Has anybody thought of that as an arthritis? They kind of, it's sort of like along the lines because it affects the joints. If people have fibromyalgia, they have certain joints that are sore and it moves around the body. But again, it's a different type of disease, but it kind of flows with a type of arthritis. So that's just to give you an example. All right. So this is where I want to say, if you, most of us have doctors, what I'm going to say in this class is really for your knowledge. And if you would like to pursue any of these things, just feel free to do that. But I am not a doctor. I'll say that right now. I do have a nursing degree and functional nutrition background, but please talk to your doctor and let them know, Hey, this is what I'm thinking of trying. Even if it seems like it's something simple, just make sure it doesn't um, contradict any of your medications or what your doctor has in terms of your treatment plan. So please don't take this as medical advice, but just look at it as, wow, here's some other avenues that I can look at for helping my arthritic symptoms. So in saying that, let's go to the first one. Now, I got I wanna just put this one out there and kind of get this one done because I know with everything, when it's to do with brain health, if it's to do with diabetes, if it's to do with any of these medical things, the first thing people say, lose weight, get your weight on, in, in check. We hear it all the time. 
most of us hear it all the time. There's a lot of us that are overweight in, in the world now. There's, there's, there's more overweight people in North America than people that are of optimal weight. That's kind of a scary stat, but it's true. We are, more of us are overweight than of optimal weight. Now there is, there's research study that if you are overweight, you are at higher risk of um, getting osteoarthritis. It is a risk factor. Because osteoarthritis is that wear and tear on the joints, it kind of makes sense that if you gain weight, you're putting more pressure on your joints. Now, I read a, a statement and I thought this was really, really interesting. Cause you know how, when you're trying to lose weight and you just get so fed up cause you've only lost two pounds and it's like, I've been trying for eight weeks, I've lost two pounds. Do you know that if you lose just one pound difference, one pound difference, can take the load off your knees like it's about four pounds. So when you lose one pound, don't think of that as no small feat. Like that's great. You lost one pound. One pound of force on your knees is like four pounds. So say you lose five pounds, 20 pounds. Have you, have you ever gone and lifted a 20 pound weight? How heavy that is? That's the relief you're giving your knees or your hip or your other joints, your ankles, your whatever your joint that that's sore. So one pound is actually a big deal. That's the, the biggest tip I can tell you today when it comes to weight management. So don't get discouraged. Please don't get discouraged. If you can, if you can maintain the weight you are at and not gain that three pounds a year that we typically do as we age, just maintaining your weight is a success. And then you're going to learn some hacks on how to just reduce it. Even you don't have to lose a pound a week. Like you're not on, you know, a keto diet where it's the main goal is to lose as much weight as possible. But if you just change a few things in your diet, you might lose a pound a month. Well, there you are giving your body a break. You're giving your joints, um, your joints will be happy. The next one is about movement. And I, and I will say this, I get it. When you wake up in the morning and your joints are stiff and you're miserable and it's COVID and we're stuck at home and what am I going to do? How am I going to move my body? It can get a bit discouraging, but here it gets set up. We have so many great exercise classes now. Chair yoga, you don't even have to get out of your chair and you can do movements for your upper body and get some flow happening. Um, what are the low impact things that we can do for us that have arthritis? Walking. Walking's a great one. If the hills are too much for your joints, don't do the hills. Walk on flat. If you can get to a swimming pool, swimming is one of the best things for our joints. You've probably heard that already. Tai Chi. Now we have a guy named Tai. Isn't that interesting? His name is Tai. I think it's his real name and he teaches Tai Chi. I love that. I haven't taken his class yet, but I've heard some really, really great things about his Tai Chi class. Again, it's slow movement, you know, with your joints. And that is a great thing if you've got osteoarthritis. Cycling takes the pressure off the impact. Now I don't run outside because for that very reason of it's too hard on my joints at the weight that I am. And even if I was optimal weight, it would be too hard on my joints. So walking is better. Any kind of water activity, like they do water aerobics or, or um, water weights, they, there's resistance in, in, in water. So if you have a community center that's open, then the pool is open. And if it's not, maybe in about six months, maybe we'll be lucky and they'll open up again. So think about anything like that because you want to be able to keep your joints flexible. You know, use it or lose it. Even with our arthritis, you want to use it to a certain extent, not overuse it, but use it enough to keep it flexible. And the one thing that is super, super important, all of our joints are usually surrounded by what? We've got muscles usually around those joints, except maybe like we have muscles in our hands as well, but in our wrist, if you can keep the strength up in your muscles around the weaker joint, you are supporting that joint. You're not putting all the pressure on the joint. The muscles take some of the, 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 the weight. So for example, if it is your knees, you can learn certain strength exercises to strengthen your, your muscles around your knee and your knee will have less discomfort. Okay, so that's our number two. So, so far, there are probably things you've heard of, you know, lose some weight, 
get your body moving, you know, and I say it a little sarcastically because it's always the, the, the number one thing is lose weight. It's like, if it was that easy, we'd all lose weight. <laughs> we know it's not that easy. Third thing, hot and cold treatments. Has anybody tried this? Anybody do this? Yes, Cassandra. So heat treatments are great for helping you feel that morning stiffness. Maybe you can make it part of your morning routine that you fill a hot water bottle in the morning, you put it, you know, behind your back when you're when you're sitting enjoying your breakfast, or or even if you're lucky and you have a spouse or somebody, uh, maybe they get up early because they go off and do their jog or whatever they do, but they can get the hot water bottle ready for you and just slip it into the into the bed where you are just as you're waking up just to kind of warm your joints up. That's a really lovely way to kind of get the morning started. The other thing is, as at nighttime, if you want to soothe your joints, you can have, well, in New Zealand, I know they use a lot of electric blank blankets because they don't have um, what we have here in Canada, a lot of central heating where everything is heated up. They have more like the room has the heater in that room. So a lot of, well, back when I visited um, New Zealand, they used a lot more of electric blankets. So they have, an, you turn it on before you go to bed, like you know, half an hour before you're going to get into bed and then your bed is all cozy. So there's heating pads as well. You can use at night to just to relieve some of that discomfort. And why do we want that? So you can fall asleep. It's pretty hard to fall asleep when you're in agony. So I get that. Now, what about cold treatments? There's, you know, people wonder, well, is cold better than hot? Well, neither of them is better. I would say the heat treatment is good for soothing and helping that discomfort. Cold is great for relieving swelling or redness, inflammation in a joint. You can go back and forth between cold and hot as well. Some physiotherapists will say do cold and hot, but it's whatever makes you feel better. If you hate the cold, don't do cold, but cold will help to relieve any kind of swelling you might have in that joint and you can get these great gel packs gel ice packs that um instead of using like a bag of peas you know we used to use things like that but the gel just forms a beautiful a uh, mold to mold onto that elbow or whatever is is it, it bothering you and it's a great way of getting the coldness to be uh um what's the word um just um, distributed, that's the word I was looking for, distributed evenly. So the gel kind of just molds to whatever you're gonna, on your knee or your on your hip or your foot, your ankle. So this is, number three is a great thing, hot and cold therapy. And we forget, we forget the simple, simple thing to soothe our joints. Number four, this one's an interesting one. You may or may not like this. You might think needles, no thank you. Acupuncture has been around for thousands of years. Ancient Chinese practices, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, uses a lot of acupuncture. I will say this, make sure you talk to your doctor, but make sure that your acupuncturist is certified because there's a lot of people out there who do it that might not be certified. So number one, make sure they're certified. Number two, if they're certified, you might have coverage with your extended health benefits. If you're like my plan, it says it has to be a doctor. So that kind of defeats the purpose because I, my medical Western medicine doctor does not do acupuncture, but my Eastern medicine doctor um, person, acupuncturist is not considered a doctor. So it can get pricey doing acupuncture. However, boy, oh boy, they put these tiny little needles like now, the thing she's holding there in her hand is not the actual needle. That's the thing to put the needle in. You can see a little needle. Um, if you can see my cursor down here, that's a tiny, thin, thin needle. I mean, it literally, it's like a tiny little prick. And then they, 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 they click, they flick the top part of it because they want that needle to just hit that one spot. And then you feel that rush of, of energy if you've had it and you go, yep, you've got the spot. And then they know they, they found it. And Chinese medicine believes that there's meridians through our body to, to open up the flow of energy in our body. So if you believe in this, wonderful. If you don't believe in this, don't do it. If you don't believe in it, it's probably not going to do anything for you. What happens is we have blockages in our, in our energy meridians in our body and acupuncture helps to release some of these blocks. So maybe around that one joint, you've got some blockage. So Chinese medicine would put these needles in wherever they want to that 
connect with this part of the body, just like uh, what's it called? Um, reflexology on your foot. You know, they'll press on a part of your foot, pretend this is my foot, and it will release something in your neck. You know, the, the foot has, the either foot has different spots that connect. Acupuncture is kind of like that. So they'll, they'll, they'll do something behind your ear, but you'll feel it in your, in your leg. It's really quite interesting. So I say, try acupuncture. I don't say do it. I say, try it if it appeals to you. The next one is meditation. And for me, meditation is one of those things that can help relax you. You know, I'll say it's not taking away the arthritis, but it might help to relieve the, the stress around the, the discomfort you're having and also help you to cope better with the stress. There are, they do feel that by lowering stress, you may also actually lower the inflammation in the pain and pain in, in the, in the joint. Now that's kind of more on a, uh, I won't say spiritual level, but in some ways they feel like you meditate and distract yourself. You're doing meditation that you can calm yourself. So you calm that stress level and it actually can take away from the, the inflammation from your joint. Hey, I'll try anything. If I'm in agony, I'll try anything. Tai Chi again, yoga, those things combined with meditation can really be great at coping better with your arthritic pain. Because let's face it, there's some mornings you wake up and the pain is so bad, you just don't feel like going, getting out of bed. Um, in North America, where I live, we have a lot of moisture in the air. I'm in, I'm on the West Coast. I'm not, uh, so there, we have a lot of moisture in the air in my province compared to the province beside us where it's more cold, dry, cold. We have moist cold in BC and it's not great for arthritis. A lot of us people that have arthritis that live in my province, guess where they go in the winter? They hightail it south when the border is open and they go to places like Arizona. Anybody from Arizona? That dry heat, Palm Springs, where it's dry heat, their arthritis symptoms seem to disappear a little bit. Dry. So sometimes people will change their environment to help their medical condition. All right, let's get on to the next one. Six, massage. Now, if you read anything to do with massage, they'll say massage does not improve arthritic pain. However, I think you can get some good temporary relief from massage. I feel like if you get uh, circulation happening somewhere where maybe you weren't getting a lot of circulation that can help you. I feel it helps cope with the stress and strain and the discomfort of arthritis by having a good massage. And the massage, sometimes it hurts at first until they get the, whatever they need to get moving in that area. And then you get the relief. So it might be painful to a certain extent at first. My mom, she used to get massage we had a lady in our neighborhood who did shiatsu massage. She had learned and trained shiatsu um, massage, which is, I think, a Japanese style of massage. The best thing about this, because my mom was a bit, uh, I'll say, a little bit, not embarrassed, that's not the right word. She was overweight, not a whole lot overweight, but she was overweight. And she just couldn't even imagine going to a massage place where you, like, undress and you're underneath this little sheet and somebody's massaging your body. She did not like that. Here's an example. If you haven't tried shiatsu massage, you are fully clothed when you have this massage. Fully clothed. Sometimes they can do it right on the floor on a mat, but you can also get mas uh, shiatsu massage on a table, which is a little easier because if you have a hard time getting on the floor. And they do, you know, they roll with their, they use their, um, their arm and they roll sometimes to help your muscles and joints to, to give you that flexibility. So consider massage. Now, this next one is important. We don't always think that the physiotherapist is going to help us. Physical therapists are like physiotherapists, um, but they help us to learn better approaches to everyday tasks. There's certain things you got to you got to feed yourself, you got to cook for yourself, especially if you live on your own. You can't rely on somebody else. The physiotherapist will help you to maintain that range of motion and the strength that you want in your joints. I believe in most places you need a referral from your doctor to see a physiotherapist. So talk to your doctor again to get that referral. In this case, this lady is helping this gentleman with his range of motion. He probably hasn't done some of these motions in a while, but being on a ball 
might help them move around just doing this movement like this back and forth helps to kind of give some flexibility back into your hips if those are if those are tight that's number seven number eight this is a very very interesting one we don't think to do this but there are what we call ot's occupational therapists now these specialists help you have more awareness of what you are actually doing with your body and your body mechanics doing everyday tasks, like household tasks. So what they will do is help you figure out, okay, say for instance, I'm going to pick on Greg, for example, in Greg's house, the OT comes in and says, okay, Greg, your kitchen is set up way wrong. This is not setting you up for success. And they will come in to your home and say, you know, let's change this to this. Let's do this, change it to that. They will help you. This is the second statement here. An occupational therapist helps you find practical ways to manage a particular task with minimal effort. So they, you reduce the effort. And I'll give you an example. Um, okay, you're going to drive. When you drive, you get into the car in the summer. And you always forget your, your second set of sunglasses in your purse, but you, you know where your second set of glasses are. They're way over in the glove compartment on the other side of the car. So every single time you get into the car, and that hurts your body to stretch over to get those glasses out of that compartment. But you do it because it's just automatic. An OT would say, well, hmm, Rayanne, why are you doing that? What if you grabbed your, put your sunglasses and put it in the little um, pocket, the little, um, what do you call it? Like little drawer or whatever you've got in on the left-hand side, right beside you. So you don't have to stretch your body out every time you get in the car to put your glasses on. So they help you with things that you just didn't even think make sense. And I'm going to get to some of those in a sec. So again, I do believe you need a referral to an occupational therapist, but with having arthritis, I'm sure you can get through your community maybe, and it's like a free service where the occupational therapist will come to your home. So that's number eight. And then number nine is where we're going to lead into the food, but eating a healthy diet with foods that help relieve arthritis. There are foods that help to relieve your arthritis, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, whole foods, foods that boost your immune system, especially if you've got the rheumatoid arthritis. Now, it's in red down below, because I thought of red and then inflammation. So I thought that was good. Excess red meat. I'm not saying don't eat red meat. I eat red meat. I love lamb. I like beef, um, free range and like properly grown beef. Processed foods, the sugars, the high fats, Gluten, I hate to say it, but gluten could be an irritant for us with arthritis. Alcohol, those added sugars, and anything else that is considered an inflammatory food. Um, I'll just state it because I don't want to get too much into it. You can read all you want on the on the topic, but dairy foods in general are in are pro-inflammatory, meaning they cause inflammation in most people dairy products just in general can be inflammatory. So just keep that in mind. All right, um, okay, so we're gonna get to the foods, but before we do, I'm just gonna stop sharing just for a moment and see how everybody's doing. Are you liking the class so far? Is it coming together? Does it make some sense? Cause this is my, you guys are my, you know, I say guinea pigs and in North America, we, we say that in an endearing way enduring way, endearing way. Um, guinea pigs, meaning yours is the first time that I'm teaching this class and it's live stream too, which is, which is kind of crazy. It's the first time I'm teaching it, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to just change my screen for one second here. I have it saved to show you because I, I didn't necessarily have this set up to show you in the class, but I feel like we've got some time. So I'm going to show you what you're going to get. All right, nobody has a question that I can see. All right, so let me share the screen again. This is what you're gonna get, because I love giving stuff out at, at the end of class, like in the post thing. Doesn't take me too long to put it together, but this one actually took me quite a bit of time. So if you can see my screen, I've put together an arthritis management guide. 
So this is in place of if you don't have an OT that can just whip over to your house or a physiotherapist that you're, you know, maybe you're still kind of isolating away from like the things that aren't mandatory for you to do. So I, I picked this picture because I love this. It's like two couples. They probably known each other for a while. None of them, you know, often with a couple, one person's got some kind of disability or stops them from being able to go for a beautiful walk in nature. But here I love that two couples, they're walking out together, all four of them, they're all walking. So that's my first positive picture. So I've broken it down in the home. Now, I'm, this isn't for you to read it all right now, but this is what you're going to get in a little booklet. In your home, I talk about simple tools. So this is OT information and physio information that could help you. This is one I did and what a difference it made. The first one, if possible, lower your shelves in your cupboards and place your items you use the most often on the lower shelves. How many of us don't do that? Like I have a kitchen that's got in my cupboard, it's got the three levels and the top level is like too high. I'm a tall girl, but I can't barely reach it. I can sort of barely reach it. But what I did is I just, I just lowered those two shelves. So they're a little bit uh, less deep, but I have the amount of dishes I need. So now I can get to the second shelf so much easier. What a difference. Another one, um, this one's a big one. How many of us, when we open the cupboard to get our, co our coffee cup or our tea cup, go for probably the same one or two cups? Do we do that? We all do that, right? We have our favorites. What about those ones? You know, I feel sorry for those cups. Let's just give them a little bit of love. <laughs> we don't want to throw them out because maybe somebody gave it to us as a gift or maybe it's our mom's old cups or something, but it doesn't hold enough tea for me, but it still sits there cluttering up that shelf. So it's awkward. Every time I go to get the cup I want, I have to like move these ones out of the way and I have to, so this is what I want to do. Show it some love and give it away. The cups you're not using. I mean, unless, unless you run out of cups and, and you need that many, do we need 20 mugs? Right. No. We're laughing. We're laughing because none of us need 20, 20 cups in our cupboards, <laughs> no. but they seem to collect, right. You got the, like the one that's got like, you know, I love mom or, you know, uh, dad's best, whatever. Like we have some of our fun nostalgic ones, keep them, but maybe just put them on the top shelf just so that you don't get rid of them, but you can look at them and say, Oh, I love that mug, but it's not great for my coffee and put what you actually use on the shelf. That makes sense. Okay. So you get the picture. Uh, what uh, This is all about the kitchen. There's a lot of things for the kitchen. And then I move on to the bathroom. What things you can change in your bathroom to help you with your arthritis. You know, to the point where you can put grab bars. And like, honestly, if my toilet didn't have the counter, the bathroom counter next to it, I, I definitely hold on to the counter before I lower myself. But I've just gotten used to that. I don't have a grab bar, but I hold on to the counter. But I have comfort... What they, there's three names for it, the bathroom guy told me. Comfort level, um, other than getting a raised toilet, you know, one of those things you can get that raises the toilet too high. I think it's not good for going number two because your, your, your body is in the wrong position. But there is comfort height toilets. It is a little bit more money to go and change the toilet in your home. But if you're in a condo or an apartment or a house, an older house, they didn't have comfort height. Comfort heights around 17 and a half inches. That little bit of a difference in height can make the difference, make or break how your knees and your, your ankles and your hip feels. So anyways, these are some things about bathroom and you'll, you'll get this whole thing. So you can, you can look at it. Living room. There's things you can do for your living room. And there's definitely things you can do in your laundry room. I have a section on cleaning. These are some tips on things to do to make cleaning easier and dressing because let's face it you know we got to dress ourselves in the morning hopefully um, we're still able to do that for ourselves without help but here are some some examples so I just wanted to show that to you because that's what you're going to get um, let's get to the last part of the class which is going to talk about the foods any questions from anybody how are we going to get this I'm going to set, I'm going to, Nancy, I'm going to send it out to you in the post email after the class. I send out a little post email and just say, Hey, this is what we covered. And it'll be an attachment in your email. You just have to click the link 
and it'll and it'll open up what we call a PDF, which is a printable. It must stand for something. What is it going to say from the arthritis? What is, what is the, uh, the thing going to say from the arthritis? You'll know because it'll just show a little link in your email. It'll say, um, I think it'll say, here's an attachment. And you just have to put your little mouse click um, thing over top of it and click it. And it'll open up another window on your computer or your phone. And you can print it or you can just look at it. Yeah, but it'll say who it's from, no? It's just not going to be uh, the, the email will say it's from Get Set Up. Oh, the email, okay. okay, and it will, and it, and it will be. Thank you for coming to the arthritis class. It'll be obvious it's All the right. arthritis class. You'll, you'll see. All right, thank you, honey. You know, unless you're somebody who gets 200 emails, like some of some people, you know, get a lot of emails. I don't get that many emails anymore. I now they're not. <laughs> okay, well, for any of you, you'll see. It'll say get set up, and it probably will say arthritis class. So that's what you're getting. Okay, honey. So let thank me you. get back to to the screen because I want to go through the five foods now at the end five type foods or spices. So I cannot say enough about this. If you've been in my seven healing foods class, I talk about turmeric. You know what? Turmeric used to be one of those kind of things that, you know, you only saw in Indian food cooking. Oops. In my, in my, um, I'm not sure who's ringing here. So I'll just mute people here. So turmeric has become more mainstream. I'm going to say you can actually get capsules of turmeric because they found that it is so helpful for arthritis and inflammation, or basically inflammation, like so powerfully good for most people. Now, I don't know, it might not uh, agree with you because we're all unique. We're all, we have all different DNA and whatever, but if turmeric works for you, it'll work for you and you will feel fantastic because it is like top food spice herb, whatever you want to call it, that helps fight inflammation. We all have inflammation in our body. So don't, don't think that you don't, you, we all have some form of inflammation in our body, some form, but, and it can be worse at times than other times. If we're eating a lot of pro inflammatory foods, we have a lot of inflammation in our bodies. If you have started to learn a lot of these things, you're taking in some of the classes you've learned at Get Set Up, you've been doing your own reading, you know that avocados helps to bring down inflammation, eating nuts and seeds with the omega-3s brings down the inflammation. You might be in better a better situation and your joints don't hurt as much. So Tumor I have a is, question. Sure. So how, I, I, I know I'm supposed to be eating this and I do, but I, is there a minimum that you have to consume where you start seeing a difference? I mean, I know everybody's yep. different, but. Yep, um, sure, good question. Yep, very good question. Well, here's the thing, like I, you notice with a lot of the things that I teach in my classes, I don't say you must eat five nuts a day. Like I don't like to make it a specific because we're all different weight, we're different sexes, we're different backgrounds. Um, I can get a lot of turmeric in my diet because I do cook like dal, which has, you know, Indian spices in it, or I, I cook some foods that have, turmeric naturally in them so with nuts you can over let me say with nuts we usually overdo our nuts than underdo our nuts if you buy a bag of pistachios or any kind of mixed nuts like i love mixed nuts and the saltier the better i can tell you that most of the times i overdo the amount of nuts i should have in the day than underdo it so to answer your question there's other ways of getting what's in nuts that help with inflammation. And we're going to get to it in another slide, but I'm going to give you some other examples. So you can have a hand, if what handful of nuts, that's what you should have in a day, a handful of nuts, 20 nuts, you know, something give or take, but there's other things that have the components in nuts that are help will help your, your um, arthritis. Turmeric, where can we, where can we put our turmeric? You can put it a little bit in your smoothie. You can put it in your soup. You can put it in your deviled eggs. You know, when you mix the yolks and you put that back into your eggs, that gives that beautiful brightness. You can add turmeric to your porridge, your oatmeal. One lady on a class, I don't know if she's here today, she puts a tiny bit of turmeric in her oatmeal so she gets that first thing in the morning. You can take supplements if it's your doctor agrees and to, to really boost that uh, inflamm in, anti-inflammatory response in your body. You can basically sprinkle turmeric on anything. It is quite bitter. It kind of, let's, let's just say it's bitter. It has a very special flavor. You make tea with your turmeric and add it with your ginger or lemon tea. 
but it is quite strong. So just, you know, tea might not be the best way to start with your turmeric. Any kind of soups, like pea soups, like the dal, the Indian dal, amazing. Turmeric just, it's like, it's meant to be there. The next one of the five things is we're going to talk about the omega-3 fatty acids. So eating salmon, you can look at the picture, avocados, um, uh, flax seeds, walnuts, salmon, those, those things, anything high in omega-3s. We are all low in our omega-3s. Most of us are low in our omega-3s. So we want to, if you don't like fish, that's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to eat. Maybe you're vegan and you don't eat fish. That's okay. But our omega-3s are really important. So other than the oily fishes, like the salmon, the sardines, mackerel, herring, tuna, we can get it in flax seeds, our chia seeds, our hemp seeds, our nuts, walnuts uh, is big for omega-3s. That's our second food that will help us with our arthritis because this is going to help bring our inflammation down in our, in our joints. The next food is vitamin D. Many, many of us, unfortunately, are low in vitamin D. Did you know that we are low in vitamin D? A lot of us are. You can get a blood test to check your blood, your vitamin D level. It costs money here in Canada. I don't know about the States. You have to get them to add it to your blood work requisition. Get them to write it in vitamin D. Say, I want to know. What, where's my vitamin D? If you suffer with arthritis, you should know what your vitamin D levels are. Do you know that research indicates and suggests that people with osteoarthritis have a three times faster degenerative amount of ability or not ability, your, your disease degenerates three times faster if you don't have the amount of proper vitamin D. That's a good reason to have good vitamin D stores in your body. It, your 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 disease will progress faster three times faster so <clears throat> where do we get our vitamin d in our oily fish so salmon again has lots of great vitamin d in liver if you eat liver or egg yolks and mushrooms mushrooms is kind of an interesting little thing why do mushrooms have vitamin d do you know why so the fungi uh, I mean, mushroom is actually a fungi, not a vegetable, but mushrooms, just like humans, they grow outside. Actually, they kind of grow in the dark area. So I'm not really sure about this, but they can also get the natural light, sunlight into them when they grow. So they are full of vitamin D. I didn't know that. I learned that studying for this class. So vitamin D, mushrooms, if you don't like eating fish, eat, have your mushrooms. Mushrooms on itself, I should do a whole class on mushrooms. Mushrooms are actually so therapeutic in lots of ways, different types of mushrooms. Okay, what's the next one? Nuts. Now, I think Greg has gone. I don't see Greg here anymore, but nuts. Multiple studies show that nuts sh uh, role in, in bringing on an anti-inflammatory response in your body. And they're just packed full of uh, beautiful monounsaturated fats that our body needs so walnuts, pine nuts, pistachios, and almonds, those are really, really great sources. And I do what this picture does. Like I buy nuts and I try not to overdo one in particular. So I mix them together. And I sometimes throw in a little bit of uh, coconut. You can get little chunks of coconut from the health food store or like our bulk area gets, and, and it's not sweet, but it's instead of adding chocolate you know chocolate chips or whatever chocolate covered whatever to our nut uh nut bags i add in this little little slivers of actual uh, coconut and it adds a little bit of sweetness so i get a nice mix so i'm not eating the like full-on nuts the whole time and honestly the very best way to eat your nuts and i should have said this when greg was online you take a little get your little container i don't have mine here but you know not a bowl don't get a bowl get a little container Fill your nuts in it and then take that with you and say, this, these are my nuts for the day and keep it by your desk or with, you know, when you're, you're watching a, a TV show, if that's when you like to eat, whenever you want to eat your nuts, but take out what you want for the day and leave the rest hidden in the cupboard. All right. And then healthy oils. Can't say enough about the healthy oils. Olive oil is actually one of the very best ones. Now I, I researched this. There is something in olive oil called oleocanthal. Its properties are very, very similar to some of our anti-inflammatory drugs, the N NSAIDs, 
um, like what's an example of one of those? Uh, let me think. Um, Aleve. Anybody know about Aleve? It's a, it's that's a brand. A L E V E. Aleve is a, is considered an NSAID. Helps with uh, infl inflammation and to reduce pain. Yeah, I can't take it. It upsets my stomach. Yeah, they are very strong. They can be very strong unless I'm having a really bad headache and bad pain of some sort. I have a leave in my house, but it is stronger than say you're taking a Tylenol. There's something in this compound in olive oil that that is almost similar to taking this drug. So it can help with reducing that inflammation and reducing um, your pain sensitive sensitivity to the pain. The best sources of, of good oils would be your extra virgin olive oil, your avocado oil and your walnut oil. Now, out of those three oils, extra virgin olive oil should not be heated up very much. If I would use it just for your salad dressings. I, tr I tend to not cook with my olive oil in case I hit the heat too high. Because if it starts to smoke, then it's not good for you anymore. And it will cause you damage. It's like, it's like putting a toxin in your body. If that olive oil smokes, you've oxidized it. It do not start over, take a new pan and start over on your cooking. Avocado oil, on the other hand, you can do higher heat, quite high heat. So that's my oil of choice now when I'm cooking, doing a stir fry or anything like that, where the heat might get a little high. Walnut oil, I think is a medium oil as well. So be careful with your walnut oil. What about coconut oil? And I love coconut oil, Carol. Some people are still a bit leery of coconut oil because it's a saturated fat, but coconut oil, I cannot tell you how much our coconut, our brain loves coconut oil. And you can go high, mm -hmm. high heat with coconut oil. And coconut oil has been around forever and ever, right? Right. Yeah. What about the grapeseed oil? What kind? Grapeseed oil. Um, grapeseed oil is another one that's not too bad. Uh, I have, there, there was a lot of pull for grapeseed oil there for a while. And I was buying grapeseed oil, not a bad oil at all. Yeah. I think right now what's taken over the grapeseed oil trend is the avocado oil. You see so much avocado oil now in the stores and we all know avocados are actually quite good for us. So, um, you know, that that's fine. Yeah, no problem, Nancy. We'll see you again in another class. So basically today we've learned to uh, a better understanding of the different types of arthritis. We've learned nine natural ways to help to relieve our arthritic pain. And then we've looked at some of these food, um, top foods for our arthritis pain and symptoms. The handout you're gonna get will really give you some more of the occupational therapy tips, like tips to, and tools on how to change your environment to help you have less agony when you are doing your everyday tasks, your household chores. Well, let me ask you a question. What about the ghee oil? Okay, ghee, ghee, ghee is, ghee. yep. Yeah, that's an Indian. Um, so ghee is basically clarified butter and clarified butter, meaning they have, they've done whatever they need to do to take most of the milk compound out of the out of it. So ghee is something that uh, a lot of they use in the Asian cooking and Indian cooking, we use a lot of ghee. Sure, ghee is fine, as long as you're not vegan, because it's, you know, it's still considered it's, it's come from butter. Um, that whole thing that I mentioned about dairy products in general are inflammatory. If you really are trying to reduce the inflammation in your body, I would stay away from using a lot of ghee because there is that inflammatory uh, part of it. So try doing, try just shifting to avocado oil uh, for a, for a time and just see if you notice a difference with your joints. You might, you might notice a difference. Um, there's many classes that get set up as you all know, I will send you out an email with the post notes and you will get a little feedback thing and you can choose one star to five stars of how you want to rate the class. And we really do look at the ratings and what comments you make. So if you have time, just spend a moment and fill out the feedback. I do appreciate it. And I do look at every single one that comes through. We have a new button now. So when you book, once you've booked, you get this little pop-up and it says invite a friend. So if you've made friends on here or you want to invite somebody outside of uh, the people that you see here, you have a little button to invite a friend, which is really a new thing. And we're really thrilled to have that. 
And then lastly, I just want to mention, um, if you have any interest in hosting an interest group on something that you love, a passion you have, or you want to suggest a class, or you would like to just get a recording, please send an email to us at help at getsetup.io. Also, if you belong to an organization, like a seniors organization, um, it could be a government program, something like that, and you want to share um, the name of that with us that you think might would like to partner with us here at Get Set Up, we would love to hear from you about that. So that is the end of the uh, class today. I hope that it's been valuable to you. As I said, you guys are my first to teach this too. So I do hope that it has been of, um, even if it's a summary for you, like a review, that's great. Cause it just reminds us of some of the little things like, hey, taking some of the clutter out of our, of, our, of our cupboards so we can reach for something easily instead of having to manipulate and you know hurt our joints at the same time. Uh, lowering our cupboards. Um, you know, one of the big things for me is when I do laundry, the laundry, the laundry container, when I'm pouring the laundry detergent into my machine, I buy mine in a pretty big thing. Well, why do we do that to ourselves? Like get the smaller version, have somebody help you fill it up and use the small one so it's easier on your joints, right? Like things like that, we just, we don't think of, but we do these things repetitively, like almost every day. Why not make it easier for ourselves and save our joints? Because we save our joints when we don't use, overuse them. So unless you have any questions, I want to say thank you for being here and have a great rest of the week. We're getting close to the end of the week, which is nice for me. Uh, and I hope to see you again in, in any of my other classes. And happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you so much. Yes, that's coming up, isn't it? Is it this? Uh, yes, it's this Sunday. Happy that's Sunday. right. Well, yeah. and happy yeah. Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there and grandmothers. That's, uh, it's a special day. I miss my mom. If you've known me, my mom died a few years back and I miss her so much. But May is such a special month to me. Why? Because it's Mother's Day and it's my mom's birthday on May 30th. So May is a really special month for me. So take care, everybody. And I hope to see you again in another class. Okay, bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. See you again. Bye-bye. Bye, Rianne. -bye. Bye,